Hello everybody, this is Crime Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 18th, maybe you'll actually get that right, Lua tutorial, and in this tutorial we'll be going over the string library. Uh, so this is a very long tutorial, so it'll definitely have to be split up into two parts. And another thing, you've probably noticed that I have a bunch of things listed here, and if you've read over it, uh, it probably makes absolutely no sense to you, but that's okay. And this is not going to be another tutorial like the math library where I just lift, list off functions and say what they do. Uh, this is going to be a normal tutorial. This is for a little later. And just ignore it for now because it definitely makes no sense. So let's start off with a simple function. That function is string.lower. So we're going to say print string.lower. And in the parameter we're going to give it a string that is in all caps. So then we save this, run it, and we get hello in lowercase letters. So you can probably guess what this does. It just takes any capital letters in a string, turns into lowercases. Then we also have the opposite of that, string.upper. And we'll just replace this with hello in lowercase letters. And you may be able to guess this does the exact opposite, changes any lowercase letters into capital letters. The next function we're going to go over is string.sub, which stands for substitute. So we're going to create a string, and we're going to do this, hello, and hello is in parentheses. So now we're going to replace this with s colon sub, and I do s colon sub instead of string.sub because if I did string.sub I'd have to include the s as one of the parameters. but if I use the colon, then it's already included in the parameters with the self parameter. Uh, I went over this in the classes and uh, meta tables tutorial, I believe. So we'll say s colon sub, and it takes two number parameters. We're going to say two and negative two. And we'll run it, and then I'll tell you what it does. So save and run, and we get hello without the parentheses. And my recording software keeps popping up, I don't know why. So what string.sub does is it takes these two indices, the, it takes these two indices in the string, and it only returns the string from this indice index to this index. Uh, and it's inclusive, so you see we start at 1, then we go to 2, so we have h, and then negative 2 means we start at the end, so negative 1, and then negative 2. So we go from h to o, so it makes hello. The next two functions are string.byte and string.char. So let's go over string.char first. So say string.char. And we'll just give it a letter. We'll say, no, we give it a number. Let's say 99. We'll see what that does. Uh, so what this function does is it takes a number and then it returns the uh, what this number codes for in uh, key code language. So save this. I don't want to buy subline text. And run it, and we get C. So 99 is C. Uh, if we did 97, not 978, 97, I believe it would be A. Yep, 97 is A. And so you can go through the alphabet like that. And there's also a bunch of other characters, and I don't know the key codes for them. There's also the opposite of this function, string.byte, and it actually takes two parameters. First it takes a string, give it abc, and then it takes the index in that string that you want to transfer into a byte. So uh, string.char transfers it from a byte to a string, and string.byte transfers it from a string to the bytecode for it. So if we save this, we should get A, and we get, or not A, we get 97, which is the key code for A. And if we do 2, got to save it. Oh, uh, that may have just messed up my recording. I accidentally went into the Windows, or whatever the tiles are in Windows 8. Run this, we get 98. And then let's do negative 1 to show that this means the end save and we get 99 which is C oh and uh, for those of you who are more familiar with C++ and this isn't your first programming language 
I know it seems weird to you that uh, the beginning is one and the end is zero or negative one, but Lua starts counting at one while most other programming languages start counting at zero. I know I've said that before, but it's very easy to forget. The next function we're going to go over is string.format, and if you're familiar with C, this is pretty much the exact same thing as the printf function. So we'll say string.format, and if you're not familiar with C, this is what this function does. We give it a string, and it's a normal string, but it can have formatting options. Uh, and what those formatting options are is you give it a percent. For this example, we're going to print out a date. You say percent, and then you have the number of a uh, number that represents the precision of the format, and then you have a letter that represents what you want to put into the string. So what this is saying is that we want an integer, or digit, that's what D means, and we want it to have two numbers. And then we'll say slash, and we say the same thing again, O2D, slash, percent O4D. So we're saying we want a digit with two numbers, another digit with two numbers, and then a digit with four numbers. That's the format for a date. And then the next parameters, there can be an unlimited amount. It's uh, You have the number of additional parameters to match the number of percents or formatting symbols in the string. So we'll say 05, 04, and 2014. So if we save this and run it, then we get a date, May 4th, 2014. So let's do another example to help you understand it. Oh, and also I didn't tell you all the letters you can use to format. D means digit. Uh, F means floating point. Uh, what else? X means hexadecimal. O means octal. And S means string. So let's do another example. Uh, we're going to do HTML code, I guess. Actually, let's do pi instead. That's simpler. So we'll say percent point four f and then the parameter we say math dot pi not pi u save this run it and we get three point one four one six it rounded up the next function is string dot find so let's change this back to s colon find and the parameter we're going to say just hello and let's change this string to hello world and remove the brackets so what string.find does is it takes two parameters it takes uh, a string that you want to be searched in and you see we don't have that here it's because we use s colon find so just pretend we put that there and then it takes a second parameter for what string you want to search for so what we're saying is we want to search for the string hello in the string hello world. So let's see what we get when we print it out. We get 1 and 5. So let's see in our string. We can close this. At index 1, hello starts. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And index 5 is when hello ends. So it's returning the beginning and end index of the string you're searching for. The next function is string.match, which is pretty much the same function, except instead of returning the beginning and end index of the string you're searching for and the string you're searching in, it just returns uh, the string that you're looking for if it finds it. So save this and run it, and we get hello. So this is pretty much useless for a fixed pattern, like just saying search for hello and hello world. But when we get to pattern matching sequences, which is this stuff, this function will become a lot more useful. So uh, maybe in this part and maybe in the next part, we'll get to that. The next function is string.gsub. This is slightly different from just string.sub. So string.gsub takes a few parameters. 
the first is the string that you want to perform operations on that's s and we're saying s colon g sub so we don't need to put that in the next parameter is uh, what you what in the string you want to be replaced so let's just change hello to L and then the next parameter whoops is what you want the what you want this string to be replaced with so let's say just another random letter J so what we're saying here is that we want all L's in this S string to be replaced with J's so let's save it and run it and we get H-E-J-J-O-W-O-R-J-D and then this second return value is the number of uh, changes that it made there's also an optional fourth parameter for this and it's the number the maximum number of replacements you want to be made so if we put in one it's annoying I have to open it it's annoying having to open this file each time we just get one J and it says we made one replacement and then if we put in two it'll make two replacements oops hopefully that didn't just mess up the recording I opened up the tiles in Windows 8 by accident yep we get two J's and it says we made two replacements so the last function in the string library is called string.gmatch and it's different it is actually an iterator in the generic for loop so we'll say for w, we don't need parentheses for w in s colon gmatch. It takes two parameters, the string that you want to be operated on, which is s, so we don't put it in, and then the pattern that we want to uh, isolate. So we'll say hello again, and then do, and, and we're just going to add this to a table. I'll tell you what the function does in a second. Just say words equals empty table. And then we'll say words, we need to indent words at position size of words plus one is equal to w. So what the string.gmatch function does is it iterates over all occurrences of a certain pattern in a string. So in this case we're iterating over all occurrences of hello in the string. Actually, you know what? Let's just make this else again. So I don't have to just copy and paste hello a bunch of times. So we're just it, now we're just iterating o over all occurrences of L in the string. So we should get three, and we actually need to for for i equals zero uh, i is less than the size of words I probably shouldn't call the table words anymore but it doesn't really matter and then do and end sorry if you can hear that truck or whatever's outside my window in the background they're doing construction outside of my house so then we'll just print uh, words at position I. So this should just print L three times. Open it and run it. Did I delete io.read? No, I got an error. One sec. Alright, I fixed the error. I just made the program a bit simpler. Instead of adding uh, W to a table, I can delete this now. We just print it. So let's save it. I don't want to buy that once again and we run it and we get L three times so this function just iterates all occurrences of one string in the subject string so that's all for this tutorial uh, well not this tutorial but this part of the tutorial we've gone over all the functions in the string library and in the next tutorial we'll be going over these patterns uh, but again don't bother trying to understand them now we'll go over them in the next tutorial so see you then.